Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, I will be profiling for you my 2005 Scapegoat Format deck. Now last week on my channel, guys, I profiled for you my 2004 Chaos deck. Today we're going to go back in time again in Yu-Gi-Oh! history to, I guess you could say, April of 2005 to about, uh, I guess you could say, the fall of 2005. When Scapegoat Format was one of the most popular decks played at that time. Now the Scapegoat Format deck has been popularized as the best deck of that format and one of the most skillful formats of all time, etc, etc, etc. I did personally play in that format and it was... A fun format, from what I recall, being it happening over freaking 10 years ago now. Uh, but it wasn't, I would say, the most skillful format of all time, possibly. Though there was other powerful decks being played at that time besides Scapegoat Format. Or Scapegoat Thousand Eyes Restrict. Uh, things like Warrior Swarm, using Marauding Captain and BLS, and just swarming the field with Warriors. Uh, because Rhoda and Return of the Warrior was around. Uh, Zombies, which was a deck I played back then in conjunction with Warriors as well, uh, was Zombies were another popular deck in 2005 during that era of scapegoat format uh, because Vampire Lord had gone from 1 to 2 on the April 1st ban list and Zombies really became a resurgent deck with Book of Life and things of that nature. Um, so it was a very powerful deck and also uh, Bone Absorbing Tower was another thing that people used a lot back then. But I did play with my friends uh, because I was kind of on a team back then with my brother and some other people, like I said, back in my, when I did my 2004 uh, Chaos deck. I was on a team, so together we kind of conjured up uh, building a scapegoat deck uh, back then. And I did play with it in a, to a couple of tournaments um, because I got the chance to play with it. So I did play with this deck. I do know how... It how it works because I did play in that era. Uh, I do know the power cards, but I kind of based this deck off, I guess you could say, the latter part of that format. So kind of like you know, as right before the ban list happened, uh, because cards like um, Exine Universe and think Exine Universe, uh, Exon Universe came out and uh, in the tins, which made it more accessible to people to play in scapegoats. Plus, I kind of geared this deck uh, to a scapegoat mirror match because. Granted, in today's game, nobody's going to be playing. I have, when they play in scapegoat format, they rarely play zombies, warriors, burn, whatever was you know being played at the time. It's usually another scapegoat deck. So I kind of built this deck to gear against the scapegoat mirror match um, because that's what I play, mainly be playing against. But I built this deck just for fun. I'm not saying scapegoat format was the best format of all time, but it is fun, just like I said last week when I did my 2004 Chaos deck. It is fun just playing with these old nostalgic cards and seeing them being played again. So that's why I like playing in this format, uh, just like at the 2004 Chaos format. So first off, we have the boss monster of the deck pretty much next to Thousand Eyes for Strict, and that is Black Thluster Soldier Chaos Envoy of the Beginning. This girl, which is actually a girl if you didn't know, uh, was pretty much thrown in every single deck. Uh, you Pretty much every deck at that time, Chaos Monsters were so powerful. Um, Chaos Emperor Dragon was already banned, so we had BLS at one still, and we still had Demok. So people were either playing either or, but pretty much everybody was splashing in BLS into any of their decks. So one BLS. Then we have our two Tribute Monsters. Uh, we run Jinzo. Jinzo at this time in the game was still a very powerful card and still a very powerful card in some regards today as a one Tribute Monster. So I still run it. Even though we do run some traps, it's perfectly fine. You only run like five traps. And Jinzo can really hammer your opponent down. It's a, it's a card that they're going to have to answer by using up resources. Air Knight Parshaft on the other end of the spectrum actually can gain you resources. So I do like one Air Knight Parshaft. So, 1-1. One, one. Then I run two Exxon Universes, uh, or Xing Universes. This one is actually one I used to play back in the day. It's actually from the tin uh, from back then. So, I actually played this one in scapegoat format. But we have two Exxon Universes here. Uh, this card really is useful in the scapegoat mirror match. Uh, it can help inflict piercing damage. On a generic day, it's a 1,800 beater, which can come in handy, so very good card overall. Plus, it is a dark target, so it can help you get your BLS out just that much more faster. Like I said, anytime you run the Chaos Engine, you know, people make fun of it nowadays, throw BS, BLS and everything. Well, back then, that was the case. Throw BLS and all the Chaos Monsters and anything you could, so we run, the, we run two Exene Universes. Very helpful card in the mirror match. Then we kind of run our two searchers for the deck. Uh, another thing I should mention is I kind of based this uh, deck off um, 
some of the old school profiles I've seen of this deck. Uh, mainly, I look back at the deck list from 2005, uh, the SJC Indianapolis, Indianapolis, where scapegoat format did top uh, on, you know, like I think it took first place and then maybe eighth place. I can't remember. It's been a long time. But I did kind of base that off of what I remember playing and what my buddies and I used to play playing scapegoat format, what I've seen people play now, uh, what people were playing back then. So I try to, you know, find my own personal playing style for it. So first off, next off, we have the two main searchers of the deck. You have Sangan, which originally was banned before the April 1st ban list, but came back. Uh, so Sangan's at one. Uh, then we want one Mystic Tomato because it can help search out a whole bunch of things for the deck, which is very nice. Then we run, for some of your one of monsters, we run Breaker the Magical Warrior, DD Warrior Lady, Sinister Serpent, Tribe Infecting Virus. So Sinister Serpent's a card that you can use with Megamorphosis to get your Thousand Eyes Restrict out, which is really, really nice overall. Uh, DD Warrior Lady is a problem solver. Just back from back then, you attack into something, it gets banished, um, you get rid of a Jinzo, get rid of a BLS, whatever, by paying just a little bit of life points. Breaker the Magical Warrior, literally back then, was probably the best standalone monster because at this time in the game, MST was at one. So pretty much it was an MST on legs, and plus it could be a 19-beat stick as well if you wanted it to be. So it was a very useful card. And Tribe Infecting Virus was just a, I guess you could say like a mini little Regeki. Uh, so it was very nice to have. Plus you could pitch it with Sinister Serpent, get a plus off of it kind of, and continue on with your day. Then we run one Sukiyomi. One Spirit Reaper for stalling kind of purposes, and one Azura Priest. So, Sukiyomi, it's very useful. You run Magician of Faith, you run Morphine Jar in this deck, which I'll discuss about a little bit more in detail in a second. Uh, so, Sukiyomi can come in handy. Plus, it's a very useful card because you can flip down some of your opponent's powerful monsters. Um, I've done that sometimes playing in back then and now. Uh, with Sukiyomi, you would just like flip down a powerful monster. The defense is usually lower than the attack. Then you run it over, uh, maybe inflict a little bit of piercing damage with maybe Exxon Universe or whatever you have. So it's a very useful card, offensive and defensively, and just it's a good special teams card, I guess you could say. Spirit Reaper can help pick cards out of your opponent's hand, uh, making them lose cards. Plus it's a stalling card, which is useful. And Azura Priest is pretty much your scapegoat killer from back then. Um, do keep in mind, Dark, Dark, Light, BLS targets... Yep, come in handy. You always have to keep that in mind. So Azure Priest pretty much has helped there to scapegoat things, you know, just kill your scapegoats. This was used to be called the scapegoat killer back then. So that was really useful in the mirror match. Then we run one Morphine Jar. Now I'll talk about Morphine Jar for a very quick second. Um, none of the profiles from back then really used mor Morphine Jar. Um, the reason for this is because I know from personal experience, back then, uh, in 2005, this card was very, very expensive. Um, it only came out, if I remember correctly, from a tournament pack. And was literally, at the time, like I think like a $50 card uh, or $40 card. It was some crazy expensive thing. But considering the fact that some scape people that play scapegoat format nowadays feel like, well, you shouldn't run Morphine Jar because nobody back then ran Morphine Jar because it was an expensive card... I kind of put all those biases aside and just said it was in the card pool. You could get it if you wanted it. So I didn't get to play with it back then because it was such an expensive card. But I did run, decide to run one Morphine Jar. It's very useful. It can be disruptive to your opponent. It can help you get out of dead hands. It's just a kind of versatile card. It can help thin out your deck just as much too. So I do like the one Morphine Jar as a tech in, I guess you could say. Then we, Plus it also helps out with Tsukiyomi too. Then we run our last two monsters, which is two Magician of Faith. Like I said, Tsukiyomi can help out with Magician of Faith and Morphine Jar. It's also a light target, BLS fodder. Haha! <laughs> so, yes, um, Magician of Faith can help you get all back your powerful cards, your scapegoats, your megamorphs, your pots, your whatever, your heavies. Any cards you need, Magician of Faith is there to help you out. Plus, she's a light. So, next up, we have our two scapegoats. Uh, we have our two scapegoats. Uh, these were actually the ones that came out of, I think it was one of the games from back in the day, but this was the main scapegoat type of thing you saw back then. Two original Megamorphs. Um, yes, these cards I actually played with my buddies from scapegoat format days. These are actually the original uh, rarities. So yes, long time ago. <laughs> uh, common, this card actually came out as a common. This card actually came out like this. So, that aside... 
Uh, back then, some people did like running three scapegoats, but because the main thing you can make playing is the mirror match, I find that two is enough because people will have ways of like exile universe, ways to inflict piercing damage, and scapegoat can kind of clog up the field. Megamorphosis is the same thing. It can get cloggy at some time, so I just like it running both of them as a two of. But this is pretty much what defined the format for the most part. Megamorphs transform into Thousandizer Sticks, steal big monsters, and Scapegoat was a defensive card as well as uh, could be used for offensive purposes and in with Megamorph. So we got that. Then we got our drawing cards, Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity. Uh, these are your two main drawing cards. Pot of Greed, staple in any deck from that era. Graceful Charity, very useful. Sometimes I've used Graceful Charity um, to set up my graveyard for BLS, which is very nice. So a very good card. As a draw card, that is, actually. Then we run some of your back row disruption. That from back then, you run the one MST and the one Heavy Storm. Uh, MST had earlier in late 2004, when the first ban list came out, had actually gone to one. So this was only run as a one of back then. Heavy Storm was still around as a one of. So these were your two main back row disruptions. As well as Jinzo could help you out as well if you get Jinzo on the field. Then you run some of your, I guess you could say, um, other good cards. Uh, your stealing cards, because stealing in Yu-Gi-Oh! is always fun. <laughs> I'm making fun of that, by the way. But uh, we have Creature Swap, which you could Creature Swap your scapegoats to get a monster, which is nice. Sometimes that is situational, but I do find because a lot of the time it's usually one for one -ing. So your opponent's only going to have usually one monster or two monsters on the field at the time because it'll be skate of back row or whatever. Um, one creature swap is good. Then we have Snatch and Steal, which is a good card from back in that era. Just to snatch, you know, steal your opponent's monster and continue on with your day. Life points don't matter. <laughs> then we run two Noblemen of Cross Out. I've been debating maybe putting this down to one and running something else, but I'm still debating that. Um, this was a card that back in that time frame was a very powerful card. Still kind of is against Flip Effect Monsters, but back then Flip Effect Monsters were very powerful, uh, even though they were slow, and they netted you advantage. So Morphing Jar and Magician of Faith, sometimes some other cards as well, this card helps out against. So we do run that. Then we run for, I guess you could say, your one reborn card. You run your one premature burial from back in the day. Uh, this card is very useful. Don't worry about that life point gain. You just get a monster back. Premature burial. Then we have some other one ofs. We run the one Book of Moon. This card, I think, was at three at the time. I can't remember. It's been so long. Uh, one Swords of Revealing Light. One Lightning Vortex. One Delinquent Duo. So let me explain these very quickly. Uh, Book of Moon, versatile card, offensive, defensive, helps you get around problematic things. Swords of Revealing Light was something I noticed people were playing a little bit more actually at the SGCs from back then, and I tried it out and I liked it. It's a stalling card, which is useful. And your opponent's not going to wait resources like your breaker or your MST on it. So you get literally three turns just to sit on it and just gain some advantage and maybe make a comeback. Lightning Vortex literally was a card that you could discard. And it's, it's another Sinister Serpent target. Whatever. It's very useful. Delinquent Duo. It's a, it's a control card. It's a, two, it's a very good card from back then. It actually, I think, came off the April 1st ban list from, you know, in 2005. But... One thing I'm going to say, and I said this in the uh, 2004 Chaos deck, make sure your opponent's kind of discarded Sinister Serpent already before you activate the Winkler Duo. Either otherwise, they're usually going to, going to get a plus off of it. So then let's run to your traps. You run one Dust Tornado. This is another uh, back row removal. One Call of the Haunted. It's another Reborning card. That was at one. Bottomless Trap Hole. I run one of it. Uh, you could run two. Like I said, I'm debating between Nobleman of Cross Out and another Bottomless Trap Hole. So... Yeah, because this was at, I think, two or three at the time. Uh, then we run one Torrential Tribune. Good card from back then. So uh, we got these cards right here. Then we got some Mirror Force and Ring of Destruction. Uh, Ring of Destruction before the Errata. Very good card. Uh, still a good card nowadays with the Errata. And one Mirror Force, which was a very powerful card from back then. Now on to the famous extra deck. So... Back then, the extra deck was unlimited, just like it was in 2004 Chaos, but I made the extra deck 14 for this, and I tried to find the best cards I could. So without further ado, let's go into it. So we run 3,000 Ice Restrict. This is the main card you're going to go into in the namesake of pretty much the era. 
uh, thousand eyes restrict it helps get around problematic cards very very powerful card very useful card then we run two Ryo Sinchi, uh, very, very good card. Um, protects him, I believe he protects himself. It's, it's been so long since I read this card. Uh, yeah, negate the effects of normal trap cards and spell cards can't touch him, I think. Something of that nature. But two Ryo Sinchi, very powerful card. Back then, 2000 attack was a lot. Uh, that was pretty much bigger than any card that was gonna be on the field. Unless it was tributed with something. So, two Rio Senshi because that card's really good. Um, then we run two Beta the Terrible. Just like Rio Senshi, another card kind of does the same exact thing. Um, but very two Beta the Dark Terrible, very good card. Main way you're going to get these cards out is by, you know, your freaking um, Megamorphosing, your Jinzo, or your Air Knight Part Shaft. That's the main way. Then you run one. Uh, Fiend Skull Dragon, a very good card from back then. Uh, then we won one Reaper of the Nightmare. Do keep in mind that if you, as you're looking through these, these are a lot of dark targets. So you have Dark Pater is a dark, Thousand Eyes is a dark, uh, Dark Reaper is another dark target for BLS. So you kind of see the synergy we're going with here. So yes, two of these guys right here. Reaper is actually very useful because it can attack directly and can come in handy sometimes, I found. Um, then we have one Ojama King. It's a fun card to play. Uh, one Dragon Blade, the Dragon Knight. Uh, now, people wonder why you play this. Well, first off, it's a kind of a good, it's a pretty dang good card. But the main reason this was played as a two of back in the day was against Chaos based decks, which were still floating around even in 2004. Because it could help banish cards so they couldn't set up for BLS or DMOC. Then we run one Musician King because he's Musician King and I love Musician King even though I never go into him. One Gatlin Dragon, this is for BLS if you can Megamorph him. Uh, one Dark Flare Dragon, it's a dark target, you can Megamorphose it. And one Dragon, the Wicked Knight. Um, this is just for level 3's Megamorphosing if you want to, just to run over things, so yeah. That's what we run there. So guys, this is my Thousand Eyes Restrict deck profile. Like I said, I know the extra deck was unlimited back then, but I decided to make it just a 15 extra deck, um, just because. Uh, but yes, this is the extra deck, guys. And this deck was really fun to put together. Um, like I said, I did play in that format. It was fun. I, forgive me if I miss said, said some things, because it's been a long time since that format did happen. It's been over 10 years, and... My mind is not as sharp as it used to be, <laughs> but yes, this is a very fun format to play. Um, I know we have things like new Yu-Gi-Oh, but I like playing scapegoat format like it was played back then, and it's fun. The reason I find joy in playing in scapegoat format is because, like I said in my other profile, it's fun playing with old cards. It's fun playing an old Skype type of Yu-Gi-Oh. People say they don't like playing it because it's a slow-paced game. Well, for crying out loud, that's the way the game was for a long period of Yu-Gi-Oh! history. And it's very fun to play. I think, in some respects, it does teach you basic fundamentals of Yu-Gi-Oh! Resources, gaining advantage, plussing. Just, you have to work for your, your pluses. Not like nowadays where you just get them for playing a certain card. You have to work for it. And, you know, you have to maintain your field advantage. You have to make sure you have good card advantage and field advantage. I feel like it teaches fundamentals in some respect, and I feel that it's fun. Uh, if you never got to play in that format, I think, or just in that era of Yu-Gi-Oh, it's a fun way to get better at the game. It's a fun way to play with obscure cards. It's a very cheap deck to build, and it's a very fun deck to build. But till next time, guys, take care, have fun dueling, good luck dueling, and I should mention, like I said before, I'm not saying scapegoat format is the best format of all time. I'm just saying it's a fun format because you get to play with old cards. It's nostalgia. And if you played an old school Yu-Gi-Oh, I find it's the one that you can pretty much play with a lot of players out there because it's a very popular format. But till next time, guys, take care, have fun dueling, good luck dueling. I'll see all of you guys next time. Have fun playing Yu-Gi-Oh, and play any old school format that you want to, guys, just for fun. Take care, everybody. Seto Kaiba, I'm out of here, guys. Till next time. Good luck dueling to all of you.